Yes. Hello, everyone. Let's take. We are live. Yes. Okay. So. Hello, hello, hello. Ladies and gentlemen, developers and tech enthusiasts from around the world, welcome to the Google Developers Cloud Community Istanbul uh, live stream. I'm thrilled to have you join us today as we embark on a journey through the exciting world of cloud computing and innovation. I'm Omar, and I have the incredible privilege of being an organizer in this vibrant and dynamic community. Our community is a melting pot of creative minds passionate about leveraging the power of the cloud to build, deploy, and scale transport, transformative solutions that shape the future of uh, technology. He, here at Google uh, Developers Cloud Community, Istanbul, we, we're all about fostering collaboration, learning, and growth. Whether you are a seasoned developer looking, looking for looking to dive deeper into cloud services or someone just starting to explore the potential of the cloud, you have found your home here. Throughout the year, we host the various engaging activities designed to enrich your cloud journey from interactive workshops and hands-on tutorials led by industry experts to thought-provoking webinars and fireside chats that dive into the latest trends and advancements in cloud computing. We've got it all covered, but that's not all. Our community thrives on the energy and enthusiasm of its members. We encourage active participation, knowledge sharing, and networking. Connect with fellow de developers, share your insights and collaboration on innovative projects that push the boundaries of technology. So whether you're here to enhance your skills, stay updated with the latest developments, or simply connect with like-minded individual individuals, the Google Developer Cloud Community Istanbul is your gateway to an exciting cloud-powered world. Without further ado, let's dive into today's live stream where we'll we explore the topic of Cloud Run and uh, service and serverless solutions with uh, Evan Weber. Get ready to be inspired, educated, and empowered as we unlock the endless possibilities of the cloud together. Thank you for joining us, and let's make this journey unforgettable. So to the stage, I will have uh, Erwin. Hello, uh, Hello. Erwin. I leave the stage to you if you want. We, You can start by introducing yourself. The well, stage I'm Erwin. I'm founder of GTG Cloud Tallinn, and I'm coming basically from Estonia, which is same time zone as the host, but a bit to the north. And Today, I would like to talk about the Cloud Run because I really like this simple and elegant service, which gives you just, in my opinion, correct amount of control and convenience. So first of all, plan for today is very simple. We will just like discuss what are the options to run something in Google Cloud. I will do some overview how I reached the cloud run as potentially best service for simple applications. I'll do a demo of Hello World and we discuss things where the good go cloud run shines and where it falls short. There is a common architecture diagram or table which allows everyone to score your deployment maturity levels. It's kind of framework and it has five levels. First level, we all have been there at uh, some early parts of our life, is basically ad hoc deployments where the team has some code and they deploy it manually somewhere. It's all manual, there is no formal process and not every team member does it exactly the same way. Second level is that when you have some kind of scripts, but process is still mostly manual and uh, still there is a lot of chance for failure. When you have an automated deployments level, when you have kind of fully automated process, but for example, you run it on your machine and still outcome can be different depending on who runs it. Then the next level is CICD you have some pipeline, but it's not fully automated. And the ultimate level of deployments is continuous deployments when you just write code and it gets shipped. 
And I think that this maturity levels diagram is very useful when you are trying to pick yourself a service where you want to run your payload. Because the simpler it's to deploy, the simpler it will be to maintain. And if you have less mistake possibilities, the more stable your system eventually will be. And what are the common ways to deliver server applications nowadays? Well, if your uh, compiler or programming language allows you, you can combine everything that your app has to offer into a single binary. For example, Golang allows that. In some cases, you can bundle Java in single class. And you ship with this file to your customers, and it's up to them how they run it. Sometimes you have more complicated situation, for example, if language cannot be compiled or you have a bunch of files, so you, for example, your common Node.js application, and best way to ship it was archive of some kind, zip file maybe. Next level is when you use some form of configuration that needs to accompany your application and you are worried about some dependencies. You can do operating system package like MCI for Windows, YUM or APK for Linux systems. And when your application gets deployed to go off with some configuration defaults, everything will be placed in correct folder. And you will also be sure that dependencies are also there. Of course, dependencies can go wrong. You have wrong versions and people invented virtual machines to do the whole computer setup, bundle everything. And when you just give the virtual machine a single file to somebody to run, and it was nice, but most efficiently, of course, was to use open container images. Initially, they have been called Docker images. And difference was that you don't need to ship uh, the whole operating system with them. And now you reach a situation when you have some application, you need to deploy it somewhere and you figured out how to make a container and you want to run it. So you go to artificial intelligence, be it uh, ChatGPT or BART or something, and you ask like, how do I use my container? I want to run it. And obviously BART will give you some answers, you will follow them and story is complete. However, we are professionals and we cannot simply follow whatever IE says to us. So next um, way to figure out how to run Docker container is to go to Cloud Native Computer Foundation and see what are orchestrators for payloads that are offered there. You will see all the different things like Kubernetes or Nomad or many, many other things. And difference is that if you have foundation behind your orchestrator, you can be sure that the project won't die unexpectedly or it won't turn closed source or just uh, at random change the licensing to something that is not suiting you. So using CNCF projects gives you some kind of assurance and future proofing for your application. However, we are here in GGG Cloud. So what are the opportunities to use Google Cloud? And I will use illustrations by Priyanka, who is Google Developer Advocate, and most of pictures that you will see in the upcoming sites are borrowed from her GCP sketch notes, which are available in GitHub under Creative Commons licensing, or also you can buy them as book. The main uh, five ways to run workloads or basically application on Google Cloud are Compute Engine, Kubernetes Engine, Cloud Run, App Engine, and Cloud Function. And I will briefly touch every one of them and to say why it's good or uh, not good for my goals. And of course, uh, here is again the attribution for Priyanka's book. You can actually buy it as printed book as well, or you can find uh, all the pretty images in GitHub, Google Cloud Blogs, and very, very plenty of different places around the world. 
Uh, I will also use the slide here about the cloud security, especially this part of shared fate when I'm discussing ways to run your workloads, because there is obvious trade-off between how much you manage and how much you control have. So sometimes you prefer to do everything yourself and have every bit uh, exactly as you want it. Or for example, in some cases, you just want to, to write your code and let someone else to handle it completely. You will just say that this is my image and these are the people who need to access it. So App Engine. App Engine is actually the oldest Google Cloud service. And uh, at some point, uh, Google was not even sure if they do regular virtual machines like some competing clouds at time did, or they will go only with App Engine as fully managed service. This uh, service launched to everyone in 2011, and it was taking your source code as input and did everything for you. However, in later revisions, flexible environment appeared where you can provide instead of source code the pre-built Docker image and use it. It's fully managed service, uh, but it's also a problem because it is a closed source system and uh, you basically get the huge vendor lock-in if you use App Engine. It gives some security adjustments to your container but it can get pretty expensive when you use it because all the managed services, they have extra operational costs, which you have to cover by paying, not by your time. And I think huge problem of App Engine is limiting uh, App Engine to single region per GCP project. Yes, you can have many GCP projects, but then everyone, once you start your App Engine service, you are limited to single region. Next offering uh, that is very popular is Cloud Functions. Uh, it corresponds to Lambda services in uh, competing clouds, and it has support for limited number of languages like Java, Golang, Python, JavaScript. And it's HTTP triggered. You put your code, you get uh, some form of URL back, and uh, it can be cheaper for you because you only pay for seconds that you're actually using the service. So it scales to zero when you're not using it and you pay only things that you use. Uh, for input, uh, this service takes always the source code of your application and builds it on Google Cloud build service for you. You cannot control directly how the image is built. And for me, it's limiting factor. And interesting that in new revision of Google Cloud Functions, actually the resulting container is running on Cloud Run version two. And it was very interesting to see that one service is actually using second one in background. Uh, Compute Engine is Google Cloud version of regular virtual machines. I would say that it's very low level because you basically get virtualized hardware on which you run on virtual hard disk your operating system and configure everything. It has stateful disk and every machine is in single availability zone. It's very fast to provision and it's also the cheapest per second, especially if you consider spot virtual machines, which can be terminated at any time, or if you do committed use discounts and you say that you, for example, buying 10 cores for three years. There is almost no limitation on workloads. You can run any operating system where you, you have licensing for, and you get the whole management overhead. You will need to patch operating system. You will need to reboot machine to apply updates, etc. And at any point of time, your single virtual machine is not like platform. It's something that you usually combine with other machines to have a silent platform 
which has observability, service discovery. And for example, in case of spot machines, you always will build some system which will be fault tolerant to the boot of single machine, like you will do cluster of many machines or something like that. However, it also includes the standard way to provision single container, single Docker container. If you configure machine through Cloud Console or via Terraform, you can say in instance metadata that you actually want to use the whole instance for single container and that the container will be run for you on that hardware. So it's a working solution, but still we can go better if we don't want to manage the whole platform. Next offering is Kubernetes engine. I think that Kubernetes today is most popular way to run your workloads, which are in form of containers. And Google is actually grandfather of Kubernetes because Borg was the system that Google used internally to run workloads. So Google experience in Kubernetes is basically 10 years more than anyone else on the planet. However, I still think that Kubernetes sometimes is pretty low level. It's like not the platform, but it's an important tool to build the platform. And especially if you are not playing exactly by the rules or dealing with node upgrades, upgrading cluster versions, sometimes it is also the management tasks that you have to deal with. Uh, there are platforms built on top of Kubernetes, Istio, Antos, and many others which help you to orchestrate containers at scale, automatically make uh, encrypted connections between containers, maybe do some network firewalling and related things. But uh, you still will be somewhat limited by capacity of your nodes. The Kubernetes does not scale automatically. However, many cloud vendors allow you to automatically add machines on demand so the cluster can appear to be automatically growing. And in case of Google, you can also have an autopilot Kubernetes clusters where you will pay only for CPU and RAM provisioned to your containers. And Google will try to hide all the complexity of managing nodes for, away from you, but it will also come at price. And that brings me to Cloud Run. Similar to Cloud uh, Functions, it's fully managed way to run HTTP workloads in container. You provide your container, you get URL back. And difference with Cloud Functions is that you provide container, not the source code. Uh, all containers automatically get the HTTPS load balancer in front of them. And that balancer will, if needed, direct traffic to all the different containers that you run for this workload. So they can come and go seamlessly without causing any disruptions to the service. Your container just need to listen on some kind of port, which will be provided in the environment. And all the containers should obey the runtime contract, some rules, that make experience much better if you follow them and can cause you some small outages if you're not following them carefully. You can have Cloud Run job which runs all the time, or you can ask Cloud Run to throttle your service by detaching CPU when there is no requests. And in that case, you can actually pay per second only for used requests. Cloud Run automatically can scale to zero if you are not using it for a while and you don't need to provision anything in advance. With Kubernetes or Computer Engine, you have to create all the nodes beforehand and you will be limited by their capacity. In Cloud Run, you just give a container and Google will solve everything else. As I mentioned, the App Engine was a service which was proprietary Google service and it had a vendor lock-in because it was not open source. Cloud Run, however, is an implementation of Carnative, which is now CNCF open source project. And technically you can run Cloud Run on your own machine in your own data center, 
or anywhere outside of Google. And this is important because you have more control before you commit to the ecosystem that you can run it at our provider or on premises if needed. So let's do a small demo. Uh, this link that I copied, it contains the demo Cloud Run container that can be used, but I will just switch my screen to the second tab and I'm already logged into the Google Cloud Console, which I can use for demo. This is how the Cloud Run list <laughs> looks in your average project. I just create the new service. I pick the sample container, which comes from the GitHub repository that I mentioned already. Let's give it a name. Let's say that we are using scale to zero opportunity. It will be a relatively small container. I will have allow everybody to access this container for now. And I'll pick the smallest possible machine. Just do not pay too much. Our request will be very fast and it should be enough to deploy the service. Oh yeah, absolutely. Chip machine is not expected to handle much requests concurrently. Uh, that is also the difference between cloud functions, which always serve single request by single invocation and single instance. That in Cloud Run, you can say that your container with several CPUs can handle many hundreds of concurrent requests. So new service is up and running. It has my container and I can visit the link. It is working. It's very simple service to start using and it's very easy to get running. Now oh, let me continue with slides, please. What are the features that Cloud Run allows me to do with my container? First of all, I can have multiple versions deployed in the same URL and same service but different containers with different content and after that i can do traffic slip splitting for example i can have canary release which will be received by only one percentage of traffic or i can do a b testing with different containers serving different people so i can do marketing decisions based on that i can also have sidecars in my containers if i need some proxy or wrappers or tunnels or whatever, I can assign the custom domains inside the Google Cloud Run service, but not in every region. And of course, Google takes care of security. I can say who are the Google Cloud identities, domains or organizations that can access this particular container. There are pre-made integration for Firebase Memory Store and Cloud SQL, which make the relevant services appear as simply sockets inside your container, which are already pre-authenticated and configured in all the firewalls correctly. So you just write local socket and use Cloud SQL or Memory Store, for example. 
Uh, file system is virtual, so it means it is fast, but if you write large file to disk, it will consume the memory of your container. And sometimes if you are not careful, it can lead to out of memory errors, which cause the whole container to be killed. Cloud Run supports HTTP version two. So you, if you want to, you can use gRPC protocol as well as your regular HTTPS. Uh, this allows you to do, for example, web sockets very easily. Cloud Run services run in Google Managed Network. They are not actually running in your VPC directly. In one case, it is uh, good because it gives you isolation and security. From other side, you will need to do something to connect to your regular network. And containers are sandboxed, giving you extra security. If, for example, your container is written in a way that application runs as root, it will not be the root of operating system that runs with this container. So if the container is somehow breached through vulnerability, the operating system underneath it won't be uh, hurt too much. And Cloud Run, like any other tool, also has several shortcomings. First of all, Cloud Run is stateless. As I said, that any write to the hard disk is actually consuming RAM, so you cannot use them. And containers come and go dynamically. You cannot run any non-HTTP or gRPC protocols in containers, so you cannot put open VPN or, I don't know, run uh, some form of database with custom protocol. Because container is not located in your virtual private network, you will need to use serverless con VPC connector, which acts like proxy that authenticates your container to your network. Or on this Google Cloud Next few weeks ago, the direct access was announced with some limitations. And the contract for runtime of containers also has several limitations listed. For example, your instance must listen for request uh, within four minutes after being started. If your container fails to open TCP port on the port that was given to you by CloudRun orchestrator, your container will be terminated and restarted. And for example, if your application is running migrations every time on startup of container and some of migrations are taking 10 minutes, then your application is not suitable for Cloud Run. If you have a uh, request which comes to Cloud Run and there are no spare container, the new container will be spin up uh, for this request. But if container is taking too long to start the request will be discarded if container takes more than 10 seconds to start up. In some cases, it's a fine, but in some cases, you need to be sure that your application is able to actually start and start listening on given port in 10 seconds. Autoscaler of Cloud Run always aims to have around 70% CPU utilization. This allows you to handle spikes of traffic but it also means that your more complicated setup will usually have 30% of CPU idle and unused. Maximum HTTP request uh, duration in Cloud Run is one hour. So for example, if you are doing uh, web sockets on the, or any um, other form of long run connections, you will need to be sure to reconnect every 59 minutes if you need smooth experience. Autoscaler will wait 15 minutes after your load is gone before the containers are scaled down. So if you had spike, you can expect that you will pay for 15 minutes. And when the container is shutting down, Google Cloud Run will give you 10 seconds between application is burned about upcoming shutdown through the sick term and container is actually killed. In many cases, 10 seconds is more than enough and it forces you to write correct code, 
But in some cases, if you have long running transaction, for example, you will need to restart the transaction in some other instance. And now I would like to take some questions if we maybe have some in audience. Yes, so uh, we don't have uh, questions from uh, chat uh, yet, but I do have uh, some uh, questions. Maybe we can talk about the, uh, can you explain the billing and pricing model for uh, the Cloud Run? And how does it compare to other uh, cloud services if we are not going to talk about it in the future? Uh, no, I did not have special uh, pricing uh, section. Uh, pricing model is very simple. The RAM and CPU is billable. So is traffic. In case if your container is configured to detach CPU when you have no requests, you pay only for seconds when you are handling the traffic. And in this case, you pay every second a bit more than if your container is running all the time. The traffic itself is free inside the data center as usual, but you will pay for outgoing traffic across regions. Nice, great. Oh, we have a uh, question from uh, Emir. Emir says, uh, thank you for the great presentation and asks, how do you access cloud uh, SQL from node service in Docker container with the cloud run cloud SQL integration? Uh, yeah. He says, and he further expressed that he couldn't find enough uh, documentation about the topic. Uh, for example, in case of PostgreSQL, you will have an uh, socket, which is basically a special kind of file in the operating system. And you will point your database application to connect instead of host name of database to that file and cloud run will do rest automatically if you configure integration correctly that is so nice. instead of providing ip you just say that var run postgresql is the file where the database is located and application will just work if you have correct postgresql driver and integration configured and I guess it's the same with MySQL or Oracle databases. Nice, great. Uh, another question that came up to my mind, uh, uh, what security features and best practices should developers keep in mind when deploying applications on uh, Cloud Run? Maybe- uh, You definitely need to read the contract that I mentioned. It's called Cloud Run Runtime Contract. It's a very short document and it gives you a pretty good overview. And some of our best practices I have on the basically next slide, which lists things that you need to think of if you are doing the enterprise grade, secured, hardened setup. Nice, great. So I believe that's it uh, for now. We can uh, continue with the slides if, uh, if yes. possible. And here we go. So what are the things that I think that are important to do if you're doing like not hello world, but some decent setup? First of all, you will need to put the Google Cloud Load Balancer in front of your service. This will unlock you with several Google Cloud Load Balancer standard features that you cannot by default control in Cloud Run. First of all, you will get the custom IP which will be the static IP, for example, if you configure it so. And you will be able to define Cloud Armor policies, which can, for example, help you with DDoS prevention, or you can ban some, I don't know, bad IP address, bad uh, requests coming from particular IPs. Like, I don't know, maybe you need to ban some countries if you don't want to implement GDPR, or if you are being victim of some malware coming from particular IP, the Cloud Armor can help you with that. Uh, Load Balancer allows you to use CDN, which will basically cache the files from your Cloud Run container at point of presence closer to your customers and will be very helpful. 
or you can use identity aware proxy. As I mentioned, the Google Cloud Run itself, it can allow you to have allow list based access to your instance. So the requests will reach your container only if they have proper authentication header. The identity aware proxy is basically login with Google screen that you can put in front of your application. So you don't need to deal with authentication inside the app. Instead, you will have login screen and authentication validated by Google itself. And only people with correct Gmail, Google workspace, or domain, custom domain emails known to your organization will be allowed to reach your container. I believe that Cloud Run services should not be public and they should be configured either to be accessible only from your VPC or from VPC and load balancer if you really need to have traffic outside of Google Cloud reaching your container. And the same thing is about the outgoing traffic. Uh, you should really direct all the outgoing traffic to serverless VPC connector. And inside your VPC, you can configure CloudNAT and to do VPC flow logs. That way you will be able to log all outgoing traffic from your container and be really aware if there is some malicious activity going from your application to some unknown IP that you didn't expect. And three things that greatly help with supply chain security are binary authorization, which requires your containers to be digitally signed with Tone Authority before they are, out, are allowed to run in your services. Salsa is a framework uh, which includes guidelines and rules for every step of your code to production service journey ensuring that you will be less vulnerable to some man in the middle or malicious actor in the middle attacks on the whole journey from your developer workstation to the code that runs in production. And ISPOM is a very useful technique where your container will be including not only the binary that is your application, for example, which is minified and compiled by all, but also will have the uh, bill of materials or list of the, all the packages that have been used to produce that binary. And in that scenario, for example, you can easily say that your container is vulnerable or not vulnerable to some freshly discovered vulnerability. It's very useful because if you don't have this information, you cannot uh, say which are the containers that, for example, are affected by log4j problem. But if you have these metadata in your containers, you're good to go. And if I would need to pick like three best feature that I'm taking from this list, it would be binary authorization, identity aware proxy, and ability to have VPC flow logs if traffic is directed from my custom network, which are the three steps that I think are more most important to have very, very secure setup. But that's all with my slides. I would like to talk on, or take questions from audience now. Feel free to join me in LinkedIn if you have some questions after the show as well. Yes. Thank you so much for the presentation. I believe that it uh, gave us very much uh, valuable. Emir uh, comes uh, with uh, another question. Uh, he has found uh, Cloud Run to be more costly than uh, Cloud Functions. And uh, maybe after going uh, over the two mil Cloud Functions free uh, T requests, the pricing of Cloud Run becomes more attractive. Maybe a question mark. Well, thing is that the Cloud Functions version 2 environment actually runs on Google Cloud Run and you can even see relevant containers listed under Cloud Run services in your uh, Google Cloud project. So I would say that pricing is more or less same. 
However, for example, in cloud function, you always have one billable instance per incoming request. On cloud run, you can multiplex requests so that if there are, say, five incoming requests, you need only one or two containers to handle them all, and you will pay only for two billable CPU seconds at that time. I see. We'll hope, I mean, we'll hope that answers uh, your question, Emir. Uh, another question, personal question of uh, mine. Uh, what tools and integrations are available for monitoring and debugging applications running on uh, Cloud Run? Can we talk a little bit about that? Uh, first of all, you will get uh, your traffic monitoring in the same way as you would get for regular Google Cloud Load Balancer. You will also have metrics for CPU, number of CPUs running and the memory consumed by your applications. The cold start times will be also measured. And I actually probably can just share the metrics screen of the application. A second. Yes, of course. You probably now see it. Yes. If I open the Aiding Cloud Run service, I will be presented with metrics page by default. Uh, these are throw away hello world container that I deployed yesterday, so there is not much. However, you can see that requests grouped by status, what have been latencies of such requests, how many containers I had, how much I will need to pay for that, because sometimes I can have two containers with half CPU each, and that will be only one CPU second per second. I have utilization metrics that will help me to estimate if I need bigger or smaller containers in the future. Traffic estimations, because traffic is billable, and things like concurrent requests and startup latency. This is what you get out of box. Additionally, you can get uh, traces emitted by load balancer that is in front of your application. And very good practice is if you do serious application, you should actually use open telemetry inside your application code. I think, well, it's not industry standard just yet, but we are getting there. Yeah. And Google Cloud Services themselves, they also obey and emit uh, open telemetry traces. I see. I see them. So uh, generally, when we're talking about monitoring and uh, uh, these uh, topics, what comes to my mind uh, is uh, performance. So uh, as a developer, or as a cloud developer, do you have any best practices or tips you can share for optimizing performance and uh, cost efficiency on uh, cloud? Uh, this is mostly will be depending so your programming language that you are using. Basically, don't put garbage code inside your container, make containers small, and the smaller container will spin up faster, scale down faster, and you will pay less. I see. So the less uncompact it is, the more fast and the more optimized it, uh, it's run. Yes, so, because uh, you pay per second for CPU and for memory. I see. Uh, can you describe any future developments or trends you anticipate in uh, serverless uh, computing and uh, Cloud Run uh, specifically? Maybe uh, in this age we have uh, large language and large language models and generative AI uh, booming in this year. How does this affect uh, Cloud Run or other uh, sectors? How does it affect uh, Cloud Run as you? see as a cloud uh, developer? Well, I think that models actually should be somewhat detached from container, like the Google Cloud the own model garden. You can train your model and access it later from different containers, for example. Also, I recently saw the blog post uh, in Google Cloud community where someone took pretty standard uh, LLM image and made it from four gigabytes 
to around one gigabyte and nice. the, it was basically by throwing away that things that uh, are included in the sample image for convenience but actually are not useful if you're running on google cloud like for example in python you very often have three sets of drivers for different video cards but in reality your container on google cloud run or somewhere will have only one particular gpu attached to it so you I don't see. need other drivers you can pay less for container yeah yeah of course Emir has uh, another question. Uh, for scalable microservice architecture, what is the best practice cloud functions or uh, cloud run? I think it's uh, mostly a question of your preference, especially if we know that cloud function generation two runs on cloud run generation two in background. <laughs> For me, there is very big blocker for using cloud functions is the artifacts that they use. To deploy a cloud function, I need a zip file of my source code. And when you have half of your company software developed and archived in Docker registry, and having some zip file registry next to it feels somehow non-standard. And in many cases, Google build packs that used to build your container are very, very good. But for example, I have more than once stumbled onto a situation where cloud functions and build packs have disagreement with me about how to build the container and I cannot influence it in any way. A good example may be the JavaScript and the Yarn, for example. Yarn guidelines say that Yarn should not be used in production. You always run uh, your software directly as Node and your package, for example. However, build packs will insist that you need to use Yarn start, for example. I see. Thank you. Uh, finally, let's uh, close up with this uh, question. Uh, do you have, uh, maybe as a seasoned uh, developer, uh, are there any case studies or success stories you can share about companies that have achieved significant benefits using the uh, using Google Cloud Run? Well, Cloud Run is a tool Usually you achieve success because your product is helping somebody, not because it runs in Google Cloud Run or not runs in Google Cloud Run. Uh, for me, Cloud Run was unlocking the power to move fast, for example. But I know that at some point of scale of company, we will switch to use something like compute engine or maybe Kubernetes because we will need to pay less per second. Oh, I see. Thank you uh, for your uh, insight. Uh, another thing that came up uh, to mind, um, um, well, I aspire to be an uh, MLOps uh, developer. So continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment is very important uh, uh, for us. Uh, how does Google Cloud Run uh, handles uh, continuous integration and continuous uh, de deployment pipelines, CI/CD for sure. Uh, I think there was a built-in integration which allows you to automatically deploy to Cloud Run your GitHub or Google Cloud Source repository, master or main branch, like on every change, basically. Uh, that is actually also a good point about the Google Cloud functions versus Cloud Run. In, say, in case of Cloud Run, you can have single container which will go to development, pre-life, life environment. However, with Cloud Functions, you always get new container built from your source, your source code. And depending on, for example, how tightly your package is locked, you actually can get different containers in different environments on Cloud Functions. I see. Thank you. Well, I believe uh, this is it for uh, today. Uh, I don't have any further questions and I believe the viewers also don't have any 
uh, further questions. But if you have any further questions that came up to mind, you can connect with me or uh, connect with Evan Weber, as uh, he stated on the uh, on in his presentation. You can connect with him uh, on LinkedIn. I believe so. So uh, thank you all for uh, coming. Uh, hopeful, hope to see you again in our next uh, event. Thank you so much. So, Have a nice evening. Bye. Soon. Have a nice evening.